Kazi is an Igbo word, which means it is well or it shall be well. Our daughter Yagazi was born on the 7th of August, 2009. And as you know, new parents, my wife and I were excited. She weighed almost 3.5 kg. You know, everything was good and everybody was celebrating. Mother, mother-in-law was around. Fast forward four weeks later, we started noticing signs. And I mean, I'm a doctor and uh, I was wondering whether what we were seeing was true or not. Well, we took her to the hospital, ran some tests. You know, the news that we dreaded, we heard. That Yagazi was born with four different congenital heart defects. As, you know, people know it commonly, holes in the heart. One of the most serious conditions she had is called transposition of the great arteries, which means that two major arteries from the heart arose from different sides of the heart. My wife and I were devastated. From joy, all of a sudden we were faced with a health crisis and a financial disaster. This is something that millions of Nigerians face every day. And this is why, to me, universal health coverage is non-negotiable. Universal health coverage simply means people having access to the care they need when they need that care, health care, without suffering any financial hardships, without thinking about whether they can afford it or not. And I mean, you will not appreciate universal health coverage, really, except you stayed in a country with one. I was a Ford Foundation scholar at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine in the UK, and I had an experience of universal health coverage. You're sick. You walk into the next NHS trust and you get your treatment. But this is something that so many Nigerians do not have access to. And it's really unfair. It's an, an inequity that all of us, so many people in this, in this country face on a daily basis. And universal health coverage again, it's, you know, it's, it's not just about treatment, you know, health promotion, prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, you know, giving palliatives, a spectrum of care. And I want to, let me bring it down home to, you know, to Enugu residents. Imagine you are somebody who lives in Ababanike, and when you're sick or your child is sick, you can take your child to the next primary health center without thinking about what, you, what, what it's going to cost you to treat that child at that point in time, because once you walk in, you get treatment. Also imagine that in Ababanike, health workers at that primary health center can periodically, you know, come to your houses, ask you questions about your health, about clean water, about sanitation, whether you have family planning services. The ultimate aim of all this visit would be to prevent you from falling sick because they know that when you fall sick, you know, all sorts of issues, you know, come with, come with falling sick uh, in a country like Nigeria. And how can we even begin to talk about universal health coverage in Nigeria when 70% of total health expenditure is out of pocket? Which means that it is when you go for treatment that you pay for it. Now, the total health expenditure in Nigeria, at least from the last national health account, is about 2.95 trillion the total health expenditure. You and I, not government, not NGOs, actually pay the most for healthcare. So what it simply means is that you and I are really, are really the queens and the kings when it comes to healthcare. So just imagine if 70% of this amount, which is about two trillion naira, was set aside for health insurance, instead of people just walking to health facilities and getting treatment, and most of the time really getting substandard care. Imagine if it was set aside for health insurance. And when you talk about health insurance, really, uh, it's a trade-off. Because you have to give up something in order to get something else. Again, let me bring it down home to us here. Let's imagine you're a student, one of the students at the University of Nigeria in Uwe campus. And you, you, know, you saw that or you were told about that very expensive iPhone that just came out. It's going to cost 250,000 Naira to buy. And you're excited about it, the features of the phone. Well. Maybe for once, you can actually forget about that iPhone and get health insurance for you and your loved ones. 
you're a lady, a student. You know, you went to a wet market and you saw that bespoke suit. 50,000 naira, you love it. You're going to look very nice in this suit. Well, maybe it's time to actually forget about that suit and get health insurance because once you fall ill in a country like Nigeria without universal health coverage, virtually all your savings would go. Illness in Nigeria pushes people into poverty. And what this means is that the poorer you are, the higher percentage of your income that you spend on treating yourself when you're sick. But one of the greatest inequities in Nigeria is the fact that on a daily basis, by the time this event ends, 165 women would have died either when they were pregnant, giving birth, or 42 days after giving birth. 165. Somebody tried to put it in perspective for us to appreciate better that it is a commercial jet with pregnant women every day in Nigeria and deliberately crashing it. So think about that. Let me give you a few seconds to think about that. Anytime there's a plane crash in Nigeria, people will just go haywire. So just imagine that every day, 165 women, something that should be a thing of joy. According to, to UNFPA, they say, they say that, I mean, no woman should die while giving life. It's an abnormality. One of the major reasons why this number of women die every day is simply because of cost. When they think about what it will cost to get treatment, they look for alternatives. They go to traditional medicine people. They go to chemists. Now, you even have faith homes. Churches have, you know, places behind their churches where women give birth, all because of cost. We cannot keep living this way. It is time for us as a people to realize that Without health, we don't have anything. In all our pursuits, if you don't have health, uh, it's pretty much a waste of time, to be honest. And this is why we all have to be advocates for universal health coverage, wherever we are located. And you know, every time you open the dailies in Nigeria, even now with social media, crowd, different crowdfunding sites, people are sourcing for money to pay for health care. You see that this child has a kidney disease, this man has a kidney disease, a child just like, like Yagazi, our daughter, is born with you know, congenital heart defects and they need money for treatment. I'm sure a lot of us here can relate to this. I'm sure some people here have been caught from the village. Oh, my wife went into labor, I took her to the hospital, she delivered through caesarean section, she's not detained because we cannot pay. Please, can you send some money to us? Or they will call you and say, okay, our uncle went to the farm and he collapsed. By the time we got, took him to the hospital, they found out that he has a heart disease and it's going to cost so much to treat him. You get this all the time. And it's simply because over the years, as a people, we have been very apathetic about our health care. We seem to have ascribed it to deity. I mean, whichever deity that you worship. But we have to make a conscious effort that as a people, we cannot keep living this way. We cannot keep living in such a way that people keep, you know, um, going into poverty because of the cost of health care. And, you know, I mean, look at that photo. Just imagine that man there is Chukudi, you know, a vulcanizer somewhere to avoid the market. When Chukudi falls ill, like I said before, the total health expenditure, what you spend as an individual, is inversely proportional to your income. The poorer you are, the higher the percentage of your income that you spend on health care. So imagine Chukudi has a organizer business. If you, if you um, evaluate his business, maybe it's, maybe it's worth 250,000 naira, and she goes to the hospital, and is told that this treatment is going to take about 175,000 naira. What does Chukudi do? Does he liquidate his business to treat himself? What happens to his family? What happens to his children? If he borrows and down the line, you know, the loan shark comes to collect, what happens? Ultimately, you see that as long as this continues, poor people get poorer. The recent Brookings Institute report about poverty, global poverty, shows that 
Nigeria is now the poverty capital of the world. 87 million Nigerians live below the poverty line. Let me put it in perspective. That is like one, one and a half times the population of South Africa are poor. And when I look at that report, I just ask myself, if I'm to evaluate that report further, maybe I want to ask, I want to know how many people became poor over the say, past five years because of health expenditure. This is why all of us really have to advocate for universal health coverage. We don't have a choice in this. Because if you think you're safe, it could affect somebody in your family. It could affect that your very lovely uncle or aunt in the village or your grandmother. So somehow, it comes back to us. We have to be advocates for universal health coverage. And you know, I think one of the greatest misnomers in Nigeria is the fact that it, is man it has always been mandatory. If you buy a car, whether old or new, health insurance is, sorry, car insurance is mandatory. So how come since 58 years ago, it was mandatory for you to get insurance for your car, but it wasn't mandatory for you to get health insurance for your body? Think about that. How come over 58 years? It's just recently, about three years ago, that the National Council on Health, the highest decision-making body on health in Nigeria, gave approval for states to begin to sign their own health insurance laws. The good thing about those state laws is that those state health insurance laws are mandatory. So if you're a resident in any state with health insurance laws, you don't have a choice. Luckily, in the Southeast, Enugu has signed just about last week or two weeks ago. Eboye has signed. Anambra has signed. But how many of you knew this? I like the fact that from the last count, about 20 states across the country have signed health insurance laws. What it means is that for the first time, the government is compelling you to really give your health a priority. We cannot continue this way if we really have to make, um, you know, success of ourselves as a country. And you know, when you talk about healthcare again, people always focus their minds on, um, you know, treatment and stuff. But really, a very important aspect of healthcare is taking a, taking a break, going on vacations, exercising, eating healthy. And eating healthy is not all about how much you have. It's about knowing what locally available foods and nutritious and affordable. At least Enugu people, you know, Enugu are not bad like this. That's one of the most nutritious meals you can find in the country. So taking vacations, and when you talk about vacations, really, I'm not thinking about, you know, going away to a faraway country, spending all you've saved. You could do it in country here. There are so many beautiful places to go and take a break. Small businesses, in, especially in, the, in Nigeria, hardly do that. So let me give, I mean, let me use myself as an example. In 2016, my wife, Yagazia and Chimamanda, our two daughters, decided that, you know, we'll take a road trip as our vacation. We drove to Ekiti, went to Ekiti, the Ikogosi one spring. From there to Lagos, chilled out in the beach for several days. Yagazia and Chimamanda had time to see their cousins. We drove to Benin, which is where my wife is, my wife's from Edo State. Yagazia and Chimamanda had time to see, you know, their, their grandfather, their grandparents, and we went back to Abuja. And to be honest, you don't even need to go that far. You could just go to the village when you know there are no festivities and rest. But we have to take our time in order to, you know, recharge and come back healthy. Because WHO now has, you know, they, they say we have a double burden of disease. We've been battling with, non -communicable, with communicable diseases, infectious diseases, add to it non-communicable diseases, hypertension, diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. This is why we really need to prioritize our health. Now, 1%, the National Health Insurance Scheme has been in existence for 13 years. Only 1% of Nigerians have health insurance. That's less than 2 million people, out of almost 200 million people. Why? Let's compare ourselves with other African countries and see where they are. Rwanda, which is in East Africa, above 80% of Rwandans have health insurance. Ghana, you know, I know we always have this battle about jollof rice, but Ghana, above 45% of Ghanaians have health insurance. But for us, less than 1% of Nigerians have health insurance. 
And you know, the concept of health insurance is about risk pooling. The greater the population with health insurance, the lower the risk it is for you to get a plan. And ultimately, the more money you have within the health sector. Because once the fund increases, then even investors will bring their funds you know, to, be, to, to be part of the chain that is taking place. So just imagine that 50 million Nigerians now have health insurance. What that means is that all of a sudden, even those kind of conditions that Yagazi was born with can be treated locally because investors, health maintenance organizations would have the confidence to begin to cover all sorts of issues. And the, my wife and I are excited that you know, Yagazi is now, is today, a nine year old, very active, you know, very intelligent girl. And sometimes we wonder whether they gave her two hearts in India, but at least it's better than the way she was born. But then how many children were able to do that because we got loans from our employers? And interestingly, Igbos have a saying about the importance of healthcare. Which means, if we keep chasing after wealth to the detriment of our health, our enemies would consume our wealth. I'm sure this is, this is something you don't want for yourself. And this is why I totally agree with the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, that without health, we have nothing. Thank you.